Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're diving into these new images of the J36. It's that massive tailless stealth beast that China has been releasing iterations of. So as you can see, each iteration has new adaptations and we've got new flight shots that just dropped. Some of them have leaked and they're showing that second prototype with some serious tweaks. So today I'll be breaking down exactly what I'm seeing with these new images. And then at the end, we'll talk a little bit about the weapon systems that this thing might be carrying and maybe how some of these adaptations allow for it to carry bigger missiles, longer range cruise missiles, and also air to ground weapons. So let's start with the basics. So here's this first image. It kind of shows you an overview of what this aircraft is. It's kind of that delta wing semi stealth looking to be a competitor with like the F-117 with some adaptations of the Chinese J-20 mixed in as well. But this is China's latest step into advanced stealth fighters. And we'll get more into these images here in a second throughout the video. But this tailless design, means that it can dodge radars potentially while also going faster. So their overall goal is for this thing to be a stealthy aircraft that can get through SAM nets and isn't detected, specifically like in a conflict going up against Taiwan where there's US SAM systems in Taiwan. They wanna be able to penetrate those without being detected and then drop weapons, drop standoff weapons. So it's not just built for close in dogfights. To me, this is more of a standoff semi-stealth bomber rather than a fighter. It definitely seems more geared towards multi-role missions. Likely regional strikes in the South China Sea is kind of their focus with this thing. This thing first showed up in late 2024. That was its maiden flight, December 26th. It was flying around Chengdu aircraft facilities. And now we're just seeing iterations of this thing. We're seeing adaptations, which is the normal flow of what you would see when they're trying to develop an aircraft. When they're trying to hone in on some of the systems, how this thing operates and integrates with other aircraft, we're probably going to see more iterations of this moving forward. So the original J36 prototype, it is a decent prototype from what I can tell. So it's got that modified delta wings, no vertical tail. So that probably increases the stealth much more over their J20. So it's also got three engines, which if you're thinking of crossing long swaths of the South China Sea, you're gonna want an extra engine. Oh, thousands of miles of ocean with no chance of landing. Potentially they will land at some of their reef bases, but they're building this thing so that it can do the long haul. And even when you look at airliners that are crossing an ocean, a lot of those will have three engines as well, maybe even four on some of them. So this thing has redundancy for crossing long swaths of ocean, but also that third engine that we see that could actually shut down in certain regimes of flight to save fuel. And then they're just cranking along on two engines, trying to be more efficient as they cross those long swaths. And then they're so close together, in my estimation, looking at how close those three engines are, even if one of the outboard ones failed, the thrust that would happen, the differential thrust, wouldn't be enough to throw off the jet. You just add in a little bit of rudder, step on the good engine. So let's say the right side has more thrust coming out. That's going to push the jet. So if it's the right side, it's going to push the jet like this. So you just step a little bit on the right rudder to correct that. And you would keep that thing flowing very smoothly. And that's the benefit of having the engine so close together like that. That redundancy that you're going to get with those three engines is likely going to advance the combat capability of this thing for China. So the first prototype of this had those tandem Ooh. land gear looks like a little bit less advanced that tandem landing gear that you would see like on a 757 or maybe a triple seven so more of an airliner style tandem landing gear and that made it clear that this wasn't a lightweight aircraft it was built to be heavy so they wanted to load very heavy things in it or carry a lot of gas so that means it was going to have to have those tandem gear so front to back and then you step up you go up to the intakes to me in that bottom picture those intakes to me just look like some sort of a j20 or even even less advanced than that. I mean, they're kind of square and boxy and it just looks to me like those are not gonna be very good when it comes to stealth. So likely their focus for that one wasn't stealth. Their focus was let's get this thing airborne. Let's start testing the avionics. Let's make sure that the beeps and squeaks work. So the weapon systems work, make sure this thing integrates with other aircraft. We'll work on the air intakes a little bit later because to me, that type of an intake is gonna bounce radar waves back and this thing's gonna stand out like a you know what in sweatpants. Almost like a MiG-25 when you look at those square intakes. So definitely older technology that they're thinking of as they're building those. So that's definitely something that stands out. And then you move up to that top image and we look at the intakes there and it looks like a little more of a beveled 
array. So a little bit more of a downward shape that then goes up and kind of blends in more with the fuselage. And the more that they can blend this thing in with the fuselage, the better. However, what they might have, and we can't really see because we don't have a top-down view of this thing right now, is some sort of an auxiliary air intakes. And you see that on the B-21 because when the intakes are even more embedded into the fuselage, it really slows down the flow of air. So you have to do something to get more air flowing through those engines, especially with three engines. And we know we have that intake on top that we've seen before. So if you look at the top of this, the first prototype of this jet, you've got that big intake, but that might just be going to that third engine. We're not exactly sure yet, or they could be using that as their auxiliary air inlet. So instead of having the auxiliary air inlets that flip up, like you would see on the B-21, they might just have ducting inside of that top intake that is now flowing to the two side intakes. So you don't really need some sort of auxiliary air inlets. However, that big intake on the top, that thing is massive. It's gonna stand out. So maybe they're thinking, oh, we're gonna fly this thing up so high that we're not gonna run into the issue of radar waves looking down on it. But yeah, good luck. I mean, when you build a stealth fighter, you wanna be able to compete with the enemy stealth fighter. In this case, it would be the Western stealth assets and those things can get up very high. So if they're thinking this thing's gonna get up to you know, 70, 80,000 feet, maybe they're thinking, oh, we don't need to worry about that top inlet and we can use that to drive air into the engines. But this inlet right here on this new prototype to me, it looks incredibly small. It does look good. It looks like it's blended a lot better with the fuselage, but what you're likely gonna have to have with that type of a setup is a better way to get air into those engines so you don't have a nasty flame out. Yeah, we're just, you know, a thousand miles over the ocean in the South China Sea, and uh, we didn't get enough air into our engine. Sorry about that. We're going to have to punch out over the South China Sea. That would not be a good day for anybody. So likely they're banking on that top inlet, but that remains to be seen. And then when you step back, again, this is another close-up look of those landing gear. So I really like this comparison. So it, to me, it means, okay, maybe some of their landing gear technology has gotten a little better, but here's really what I think they're thinking. So before, when they had those trucks on the bottom. They had the tandem setup, so that means front to back. To me, I think they're just trying to get as much in this aircraft as possible, as heavy as possible. Let's just get it out the door. Maybe some of the composite material wasn't to the level that we've seen in a lot of Western jets, so the airframe itself was heavy. And then the designers decided, hey, actually, instead of making this thing super heavy, we've gotta make it more economical. If we're gonna cross long swaths of ocean, if we're gonna get it up and airborne for a long period of time, we're just not gonna be able to carry as much as we thought. So as far as air to ground armament goes, I think they probably pulled back a little bit and they're not gonna carry the massive heavy amounts of air to ground armament. And when you look at how the landing gear doors in the top image, the new image, you can see they're smaller. So in the bottom one, they're massive because they have to account for that tandem setup of those wheels. So what happens when you make those bigger? Well, you gotta shrink the size of your weapons base. So to me, in that top image, it looks like they've actually made those gear doors a lot smaller. So that might allow for a lighter weapon that's a little bit longer and bigger. So think cruise missile or think PL-15 or PL-17, those telephone pole sized air to air missiles. So I think they're probably shifting their strategy when it comes to what they're actually gonna use this aircraft for. So again, maybe initially they thought it would be some sort of a heavy style F-117 bomber carrying massive loads of bombs in and bombing targets in Taiwan. And now they're realizing, oh, actually we're not gonna be able to stay airborne very long if we do that. And we're not gonna have the endurance to go long distances if we do that as well. So we're gonna shift up the technique now to have this side by side wheel set up that's a little more traditional for a fighter. And if you want to get it to a point where maybe you can land on an aircraft carrier, potentially having that truck back and forth set up is not going to be as conducive as well. But the big thing is those gear doors being smaller. So now you basically use more of the fuselage for gas and then for those long range weapons like cruise missiles and the PL-15, PL-17. So that adaptation is huge. And then as we step back, this might be even a bigger one, a bigger adaptation is the adaptations of the engine. So the bottom image there, you can see that it looks a semi-stealth type setup with the engines, but it just kind of looks like an afterthought. To me, they just kind of continued the bottom of the fuselage and they didn't really think through it very much. But then when you step up to that top image, the new image, you can see it's a lot more serrated. So a lot more serrated edges. And even when you look at the exhaust inlets of the F-35, how serrated that is, the back of the F-22, very serrated, YF-23. So they definitely are taking notes, like deep notes from the YF-22, the YF-23, and the F-35. 
35 to build those serrated edges into this jet so that it's actually capable of being stealth from the rear quadrant. Because I think from that bottom image, you can see it just, to me, it's an afterthought. They didn't really put a lot of intention into it. They're like, hey, we got three engines. It looks like it could actually have some sort of a stealth thrust vectoring setup, maybe 2D, but I really think that they're maybe skipping that and maybe focusing more on what would actually be a stealth profile from the rear quadrant. Because again, you got CCAs all around you. You can't just be stealthy from one quadrant anymore. Those days are over because there's gonna be detection systems probably 360 degrees around the battle space. So China's thinking about that and they're updating the serrated parts of the engine. However, it does look a little bit like a legacy technology. It looks like an F-22 technology. So I think their technology isn't to the point yet where they're designing their own stealth characteristics. They're definitely borrowing from the F-22 and the YF-23. And then you can see some adaptations to the front of the aircraft as well when it comes to that pitot tube, but they didn't fully remove the pitot tube. And that tells me a lot about China's capability with their avionics, their pressure sensors, their altimeters, their airspeed indicators. So the bottom one has a lot more little dangly things hanging on it. Dangly things, that's an official term, obviously. But if you look at the top one, it looks to be a little more streamlined with the jets. When it comes to those things, those protrusions coming out of the front of the jet, especially from the side quadrant, that's just not gonna be good for any type of stealth characteristics. So maybe they're gonna try to integrate that back in, in their next version of this thing. And then when you look at the rudder vaders on this aircraft, to me, that's a problem that they've figured out relatively well. We don't know how maneuverable it is yet. It looks decently maneuverable in some of the leaked footage, but nothing insanely maneuverable like you would probably want if this thing was gonna be some sort of a fighter style aircraft. So again, more of the bomber regime is what makes sense. But yeah, the rudder vaders are interesting. I think China was kind of like, we're gonna do something that's completely ours and not something that they can say be ripped off from the West. And that is that rudder vader setup. Seeing that, okay, interesting. You know, is it actually feasible in combat with those things folded down like that? Obviously that's gonna bounce back a lot of radar waves, but if it's just doing that at slow speeds and it's not doing that when it's on its combat runs, so that might be something that actually is beneficial for them and allows them to not have that vertical tail. And that vertical tail is gonna be something that is not gonna be as stealthy, especially from side and rear quadrants. And a little more about the power under the hood of this thing, I think it's worth us talking about. So you got those three engines and the fresh nozzles and those fresh nozzles suggest maybe they're thinking of some sort of thrust vectoring capability. We hinted at that before. So when you think about the engines combined with the inlet, so I think maybe what they're doing here, if you look in the bottom image, the way that those inlets flow straight back, that's the first prototype. And then in the top one, it almost looks like they kind of go up and back. And then one thing we didn't really hint at before is those inlets being maybe a little bit of a diverter inlet. So a lot of these stealth aircraft will have diverter inlets. So they kind of flow in like this. So radar waves can't get in. It looks like to me in that bottom image, that's not a diverter inlet, kind of just almost goes straight back. But then in the top one, it looks to blend a little more up and in to the actual aircraft itself. So I think they're trying to do some sort of a blended divertless inlet system and Doing that in a way that's a supersonic aircraft is tricky. So they're doing it slowly and that's probably why we didn't see it on that first prototype. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. We gotta talk a little bit about the weapons and why they're actually adapting this thing is likely because they're changing the way that the weapons sit in this thing. So three internal bays is what it looks like to have from what I could find. They've got a larger central one. So that would be for bigger stuff and then some side bays. And again, having those gear doors a little smaller allows for the side bays to carry a little more bigger of a missile or a cruise missile. So again, adaptations of this aircraft are really gonna be focused on the PL-15 missile. That's probably gonna go in their main bay, maybe a couple, maybe two or three of those things. Those are radar guided missiles with an active seeker, and they're said to be able to launch at over 100 nautical miles. Maybe the PL-17 could go in there as well, and that's just gonna extend the range out. So that could be something that they're thinking as they're making those gear doors smaller, and they're making more room for those air-to-air -air missiles. Again, the Chinese air power brain, I think, is seeing this thing as a high value target striker, like striking down AWACS, things like that, that would basically take down the eyes of Western aircraft, of Taiwanese aircraft. So that's kind of their main goal, I think, with this thing. And some of the rumors out there are saying the side bays could carry PL-10, so that would be weapons that are used more for a close-in dogfight type defense. I don't really buy that. I don't think this is a dogfighter type aircraft. I think they're gonna have another aircraft that maybe will be more of a dogfighter. So what are some hypothetical situations that we might see this aircraft operating in as it goes through its pro 
prototype development into a production phase. So think of this, it would be a South China Sea flare up and we've seen China focusing on the South China Sea, focusing on Taiwan a lot recently, but this J-36 would launch from a mainland base somewhere deep inside China and they'd be banking on their stealth profile to evade any type of early warning. And then they might try to get off YJ-12s, which are anti-ship missiles against a US carrier group. And they can do those from a standoff distance. Obviously they would be countered, right? US F-35s would be countering this by working with E-2D Hawkeyes. But those E-2D Hawkeyes, those AWACS style Navy aircraft would be high value targets that China would try to target and take down as well. So not only would this J-36 be launching anti-ship missiles, they'd be launching anti-high value target missiles as well, like the PL-15, the PL-17. So those F-35s would have to get AIM-120s off the rails as fast as possible and put those J-36s into a defensive posture where ideally their size becomes a liability because they don't have a lot of ability to maneuver very sharply close in. So they would probably try to turn around way at range. So maybe that would keep them from being able to get their standoff weapons off the rail. That would be one of the main objectives of the F-35 and the F-22 when it comes to fighting this J-36 in that high stakes Taiwan Strait, South China Sea scenario. So there you go, guys. That's the new images of the J-36. As we can see, the evolution of this thing is coming right along. What do you think? What do you think the primary mission of this thing will be? And do you think we'll see it in service anytime soon? Let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear what you think. And then, hey, as always, if you would, please just watch this video right here. That's the best compliment you can give me is just click on this video right here and watch that video. I would greatly appreciate it and it helps the channel grow. Thank you so much for being here, guys. This is Ryan, also known as Max Afterburner, signing off.